Now I wanted to share a pro tip. If you're ever with someone and you want to win an argument, why don't you go ahead and throw up an Apple graph without any values on either of the axes? And I guarantee you what, you're gonna win that argument twice as fast. Let's go. What is going on you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today I want to share with you why I actually ordered the Apple Silicon Mac Mini, checking a few boxes for me and seeing if that overlaps with what you could use this Mac Mini for. Now let's get a little context here because I know people are gonna be hitting me up in the comment section below because that's where I'm hanging out. But those of you that build PCs and you're like, this is a joke, there's an Apple tax, you're drinking the Apple Kool-Aid, you're a fanboy, and let's actually put some perspective in here because hey, just like you building the PCs, I have done that for years, and I like a good muscle car too. I like a Camaro, 427 cubic inch engine, 450 horsepower, and thinking about how fast that thing can go, and then when you pair it up with something like, you know, a Honda Civic. I mean, those were things that I actually thought about like when the, this was kind of a thing. Like when people were modifying cars and they were taking a four cylinder engine and putting it up against something like a, a muscle car. So I get it. Let's talk about efficiency though. Now, previous to this recent announcement, we know that Apple had been working on silicon for quite a while as they had announced in uh, the summer. And so what we had come to terms with is that, all right, well, they're just trying to figure out how to uh, make these chips more efficient, getting better battery life. And really when it comes to things like that, when it comes to efficiency, are you going to get the same power output? And what we've discovered is that per watt, it seems like Apple has already turned this thing out. And of course, for those of you that did not check out my iPad Air 4 review when it came to uh, editing video 4K footage from a Sony A7S III H.264, H.265, a very heavy codec to work with. I certainly couldn't do it on that machine with my external graphics card, but doing it on an iPad Air with an A14 chipset, no problem. I mean, again, we look at the, the watts, so the efficiency per watt. And same thing like looking at a Tesla, like for bringing it back to the car. The Model Y is what, 384 horsepower? And the top end S, I know ridiculous, is like 762 horsepower in an engine that there is no actual combustion happening? I get it, I get it. For those that are building PCs, I know what you're talking about, but this type of efficiency, this power, I'm really excited about it and I'm excited for what is to come in the future. And so the announced M1 chipset, which M1 I assume being the first gen and a lot of the rumors still swirling around as this is basically a modified A14, A14X possibly, but the chip that is in your current iPhone, if you've got an iPhone 12, and of course your current iPad Air, and now it's in a computer where we expect it to do a lot of heavy lifting and a lot of the stuff that we've been expecting from the x86 architecture. So I understand it does sound ridiculous, the fact that this thing does have, uh, it's an eight core with four power cores and four high efficiency cores and going into an eight core GPU and I really can't do it justice, but reading up on what Anantech did, and I will actually link up that article in this video, but the way that they actually broke apart looking at the die, at least from what Apple had shared when it came to the die of this chip and really breaking this thing out, this thing looks as if the they have really dialed in the efficiency. And obviously this is still first gen. And I, that's something that I really wanna talk about, especially for those of you that might have to rely on this machine. And this might not be the right investment to make, but for someone like me, it is, and I'll get to that in a moment. Now, of course, I'll briefly just touch on the fact that this chipset is in the MacBook Air and there is no fan in it. And the fact that you can also get 15 hours of battery life out of that with no fan and that type of performance, although it looks like there is some binning. And so as far as that chipset is concerned, I, I am assuming that you're not going to get the full power based on the fact that there is no fan and of course, they kind of have to figure out the, the power efficiency and of course the battery efficiency, uh, the fact that the MacBook Air is so slim, but then pivoting over to the MacBook Pro 13. And 
I'll actually tell you, one of the reasons why I didn't choose that is, well, first off, I already have a portable device. I already have a MacBook Pro. However, the iPad Air is still my everyday carry. So to me, it just didn't make sense right now. And especially Apple is notorious for when they're transitioning over to something, especially something like this, they're going to try to keep the same uh, tooling uh, involved because as far as putting the internals in it, that is going to be different. However, everything on the external, everything that has to be retooled, redesigned, that's something that's going to come later. And I'm actually interested in to see what Apple is going to do with a redesign when they launch either uh, an updated M1 or even going into an M2 in 2021. And of course, the fact that it does have the fan, it seems as if the MacBook Pro is going to be able to utilize that chipset the way that it's intended to be used. And pivoting into the Mac Mini, that's the same thing. They added a fan in that. And so there is no issue with battery. So that's not going to be a problem. I can't really tell you whether the, the chipset in the, the Pro versus the Mini, if there's gonna be any difference. But honestly, I don't see why there would be, but I can't wait to actually get my hands on that just to test it out. Now let's actually check a few boxes when it comes to the Mac Mini, but just to let you know that I also have one from way back when, from 2009, it still works. So I'm not sure if I will get this much life out of this current generation of Mac mini, but what I will tell you is I'm willing to give it a chance. And the fact that I already have that 4K monitor behind me, I also have the um, Logitech lineup when it comes to the MX Master 3, and then of course the MX Keys from Logitech that is already ready to go. And I mean, I already have the laptop, so I don't really need that portability. And quite frankly, in the state of the world right now, who is going anywhere? Now, one of the things that may be disappointing is that it does only have the two Thunderbolt USB 4 connections. So still Thunderbolt 3 USB 4, but two of those connections, I know that can be kind of confusing because I think uh, originally people thought, oh, Thunderbolt 4. Um, and as far as I know, it's still Thunderbolt 3. And with this setup, I'm actually going to be able to just via the USB-C or the Thunderbolt connection in that monitor, I'm just going to be able to connect it right there. And I already have like a hub like this connected to the monitor anyway. So from an SD card uh, reader aspect of that, and then of course, additional USB type A, which you do get two USB type A on the Mac mini itself, and also two only gigabit uh, ethernet. So not 10 gigabit ethernet. And that could be disappointing for some of you, but although if you are docked like I'm going to be, then maybe you just use that other Thunderbolt 3 connection for whatever you need that would ultimately be faster than that gigabit or 10 gigabit ethernet anyway. And of course you do have HDMI 2.0, which again, that will be something that I could certainly utilize. And Wi-Fi 6, everybody's been clamoring about Wi-Fi 6. So there you go, Apple delivered it. And of course, Bluetooth 5.0. So it seems like Apple is again, moving in that direction, maybe trying to play a little bit of catch up, but still housing it in the same infrastructure, the same case, and you only have a silver option. However, there's gonna be plenty of options out there. If you're listening dbrand, I'd like to actually put a skin on this thing. So I'll decorate it however I want to, but really it's not something that is a deal breaker for me, the fact that it only comes in silver. And now it comes to checking further boxes for me, more specific, and maybe this was aligned with you, but here, first and foremost, this is a business decision that I made. This is a business expense and a business write-off. I'm a creator and I create every day. And so I use these tools to actually make money. I make money on this channel. That's the full transparency there. I do other creative work. I do other client work that I get paid for. So the tools that I use and the tools that I share with you, there is revenue coming in. So it does make sense. So for me to take this risk, as to whether it might end up just being a very expensive brick on my desk. Well, I do have backup tools to help me keep creating and doing the work that I do until I can figure out what happened to the Mac mini being the fact that it is a gen one. However, I'm pretty sure that Apple is going to kind of knock this one at least as close out of the park as possible. And really, I hope they really just kind of knock the cover off the ball with it. I am very much ingrained into the ecosystem, specifically when it comes to creation. I use Final Cut Pro to edit my videos. I also use Logic 
for audio, podcasting, and any of that kind of sound design that I do. So very much ingrained into that ecosystem where you know Apple is going to be right on it when it comes to how this works with the architecture. The software and the hardware architecture, they have to work well together. Not to mention the fact that in their keynote, in, in that event, they were showing how they were using DaVinci Resolve on, the, on these machines. But also too, when it comes to the Adobe Suite, I do use Lightroom and Photoshop, and I'm fine with what I have available to me on the iPad. However, Apple has, like most of the Adobe stuff has worked well for me, but I do not use Premiere, although I know plenty of people who have issues with Premiere working on Macs from time to time. But again, being ingrained in that ecosystem makes the most sense for me, that's where I am. So if you're someone who is concerned about your apps, your software, or anything that will not work for you on this current architecture, it's the same thing as things were transitioning for Apple many years ago from the PowerPC over to the x86 architecture, and where I remember not like having issues with certain software, like just not being available or not working well. I, I get it. So those are things that you should be thinking about. Although I'm sure plenty of you are just going to listen to people like me and other creators where we get these things and we put it through their paces because what I really wanna do is see what this output is for this Mac mini. And speaking of the output, one of the things that I think is fairly disappointing and something else to consider is that if you are someone who uses an eGPU, so an external graphics card like I do on that machine, it sounds like that's not gonna be possible. However, with the efficiency of this chipset, am I really gonna notice it? And that's gonna be the big question. Now, as that creator, someone who is shooting a lot of video and uh, a lot of photos and doing that type of editing, I did pay additional Apple tax, as some of you like to kind of joke about, and I upgraded to the one terabyte of storage and then also to the 16 gigs of RAM. And I know plenty of you are hammering away at the specs and thinking like, there's no way you can do pro work with 16 gigs of RAM, it's ridiculous. I've told you before, if you're new to the channel, I am an Android user as well. And I also have used Windows, I totally get it. But the utilization that Apple apparently is getting out of these chips. Same thing with the iPad Air 4 and what I can do with it. It is ridiculous how efficient it is. So rather than me getting caught up in the specs and also knowing that I have these SSDs laying around, I, this is a terabyte SSD. I've got, I've got several of them around. And yes, I could certainly connect those to the back of the Mac mini and be fine. But I also am thinking about doing some, some benchmarks, my own testing, and being able to have enough space to do that on. So that is one of the reasons why I upgraded. But for many of you out there, I would highly recommend, like if you just wanna edit on an SSD or do work on an SSD, that's completely fine as well. So that could definitely save you a couple hundred bucks. But to get real actual work done and not get focused just on the spec sheet, that's what I'm most interested in. And that's what I wanna share with you. So definitely stay tuned for that. I'm going to be running this thing as much into the ground as I possibly can, but it may actually run me into the ground because I'm gonna throw everything I possibly can at it. What questions do you have for me at this time? Probably not too many at this point because we still need to get this hardware in our hands, but if you wanna hit me up, that's where I'm hanging out, down below. Let's actually have a conversation, let's hang out, let's, you know, what's going on in your life? Love to hear from you. Go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking the faces. You go do the things I'm going to keep creating here for you. And until next time, I will catch you right back here on the next one.